Mix it with Nike Ultimate Plug-in Guide. Manufacturer of Spotlight is on FabFilter. FabFilter is a company that started in 2002 uh, by co-owners Friedrich uh, Sligkerman and Floris Klinkert. I apologize if I'm really messed up their names. Uh, they're both musicians, engineers, and studio owners. Uh, and they uh, started off um, uh, in 2004 releasing a mono synth called FabFilter 1. And uh, so that kind of started their foray into designing and building plugins. The company itself is based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And really the motto of the company or the way they uh, um, kind of size up their, themselves as a company is beautiful sound and fantastic workflow. And that really perfectly describes what FabFilter is all about. FabFilter is... Uh, not going out there and em doing emulations of existing analog gear like most of the manufacturers do. What they do is they actually just make really super high quality plugins that are um, amazing, offer amazing workflows and uh, simple to use and just sound great. So the accuracy, the feature sets, uh, everything is just really precision workmanship, uh, really incredible. And uh, the Pro Q2 is one of my favorite uh, digital EQs, if not my favorite digital EQ. You see me using this all the time on uh, projects and demonstrations and mixes and stuff like that. So it's really, really incredible. Um, the Pro Q2 is probably their signature product to me. I think of the must have plugins, the Pro Q2 is one, Pro C2, and the Pro DS for sure, and probably the Pro Multiband. And uh, the more I start thinking about uh, the additional plugins they have, the more I just want to uh, uh, <laughs> add more and more to the list. I think what's really special about the Pro Q2 is just the sheer flexibility uh, and the ability to make uh, have up to 24 filter types um, or up to 24 filters, right? So you can have uh, 24 different EQ points, the graphic display, the ability to change the size of the display all the way out to a full screen display. Um, which is uh, a little scary, but uh, it has a, a frequency graph. It has, you know, a keyboard, so you can actually select frequencies as specific notes if you want to work on the musical value. Um, and also, I think the most powerful thing is uh, you can work zero latency for uh, the least uh, load, right, least workload. So, uh, And you can work with natural phase, which gives you a little bit more of an analog uh, characteristic, uh, which is a little cleaner in terms of the phase discrepancies. And then you have linear phase, uh, which uh, when you select the linear phase, then you have varying degrees of linear phase. So you get a lot more um, uh, latency as you go up to the maximum, but that brings you more towards uh, more towards a, uh, you know, for mastering uh, type of situation. So it allows you to really control the uh, level of it and uh, mid-side processing uh, and you know, just loads of features. This is uh, this is definitely a must-have plugin if you're looking for a digital EQ. Uh, also, really excellent is the Pro C2, and this is a compressor plugin. What's really cool, it's got a great knee control. Uh, you have different styles in terms of the release characteristic uh, and the way that that works, and that's really powerful because um, the shape of of the release characteristic in particular is not necessarily linear, especially with analog components. So you'll get kind of different variations of sort of S-curve or dips uh, or, or bulges in terms of the shape and the way the release characteristic is. And that will be different for solid state components or optical components or, or um, uh, for, um, uh, you know, uh, working with Varimu components, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there's an incredible amount of flexibility in, in terms of this. It also has a hold feature, which you rarely see on a compressor, which is great. This is an amazing one. Uh, there's also a whole sidechain uh, set up here with sidechain filtering. So you can actually uh, audition, set up an external sidechain, and then filter that going into for the trigger of compression. Uh, wet dry control uh, just has about everything you need, including an auto gain. It's actually an auto gain on the Pro Q2, which is really amazing. And that's kind of a hidden feature in there. But this sounds incredible. Great graphic display, really simple. With all of these, uh, you can set uh, the size. This one doesn't go full screen. Actually, it does go full screen, although uh, that may or may not be necessary. Another favorite of mine is the Pro DS. Uh, the Pro DS, and I'll zoom in here a little bit, uh, is an amazing plugin because you can work wideband or split band. Uh, you have some filters here to determine the area that is affected. So you can really clamp it down into a 
particular area, if you have a focused problem that might be like a CH or uh, something that is a little bit more of a harshness, but not like a pure S, or you could sweep it up to higher frequencies, uh, you could get pretty aggressive with it. Um, it has a look ahead uh, feature and uh, stereo link if you have it on a stereo channel, uh, which most of the time for vocal tracks is not that way. Um, and then, you know, uh, threshold, all the usual uh, stuff that you see. You could uh, disappear the display if you don't want to look at it. Another really great, powerful one has oversampling um, built into it as well, just for sound quality purposes. This is a very flexible, um, simple, easy to use um, um, de-esser, right? Uh, you could work for a single vocal or they have like an all around type of thing. So you can change the performance aspects of it on, on that end. Um, the Pro G is a gate module. And uh, um, this one is actually just pretty straightforward uh, gate expander. Uh, there's some expert controls that you have here that again allow you to control sidechain filtering and all of that sort of stuff, wet, dry, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, another really uh, powerful, simple uh, tool that's often overlooked in DAWs because you can get into a lot of editing, but sometimes gate uh, can give you special effects that are much harder to draw in uh, on your waveforms and stuff like that. The Pro Multiband uh, is really another amazing one, again, with oversampling, so really designed uh, to be used for mastering purposes, especially if you want to go linear phase with it. Uh, it's, it by default comes up as dynamic phase. Uh, it's very simple to create uh, different bands with it. If I show up a band here, it'll work as an expander module, or it can work as a compressor module. So the signal will be here and it will pump upward towards that based on the range, attack and release times, right? So I can set uh, my range or I can be in compress mode, in which case it will work downward towards the green area. So just that alone allows you to create a, a range of pumping movement, which is really powerful. Again, you have a knee control, um, the uh, look ahead feature, you know, uh, good uh, control over the attack and release uh, for each band. Uh, really, again, another really, really powerful one um, in terms of uh, even mixing uh, to have on a mix bus, but also particularly for mastering. Really, really powerful tool. Um, uh, also for mastering, uh, the Pro-L uh, for uh, limiter. Uh, really simple. You just have an input gain. You raise the gain up into a fixed threshold, and then you could set your output level. Uh, down here, if you want to back that off, it's sort of typical to back it off to like 0.2 dB as your output, uh, giving yourself just a little bit of headroom. But you do that, you crank it up, and uh, you can uh, just kind of push up into it. Again, it has oversampling. Uh, you have add in the dither um, if you wanted to put this at the end of your chain, and then you have some different um, uh, shaped um, uh, noise shaping characteristics if you want to add those in see which one sounds best. And uh, another really, really um, kind of hidden one that you might not always pick up as your first choice, but if you actually start digging into it, you realize how powerful and amazing it is. Um, another one that's really simple and, and quite cool on that end is the um, Pro R, the Pro Reverb. Um, one of the things that you notice is a lot of similarities in terms of the workflow and design. Um, they really design their plugins FabFilter does in a way that's like ergonomically pleasing. As you go from plugin to plugin, for all the plugins that we've just gone through, and we're going to get into some older ones which have a slightly different or varied design, um, you see that the controls are very simply laid out. Um, in this case, rather than getting into all the individual like heavy duty parameters of working with sound, you basically have like a space, it'll change different shapes based on, you know, like you see something that looks like a church here, like a cathedral that would be at the largest size, you know, performance halls down to small room, uh, and you, you change your reverb time here, you could set your distance, which is like a, a way of like, you know, your source, uh, your positioning, listening position relative to the sound source, and uh, that affects um, early reflection characteristics and all kinds of other things. There's a character with chorusing and brightness control. It's actually, it's an interesting thing here. You could also change the shape of the delay uh, of the reverb characteristic, control the, uh, EQ, uh, the well, this is like not the EQ of the reverb itself. That's at the output here, but it's like uh, the reverb time, shaping the reverb time at different frequencies. Uh, so like damping kind of control. 
Um, very, very cool. Um, this one actually, you can dial in sounds really quick uh, with it, which is which is pretty amazing. Um, we kind of work uh, through here. There are also some tiny little plugins here. The micro is just a single filter, uh, just a real simple, great sounding filter that you can sweep for effects and stuff like that. Uh, the simple one is uh, another one like that that just has two bands, and then you can have all kinds of uh, you know, funny stuff there where you can grab this and, and then just kind of sweep it around, or you could just have fun with it and play with it. It looks cool. Uh, Saturn is a very powerful multi-band saturation effect, which is kind of cool because you can actually go and set up a different um, characteristic for each band. So if you kind of like, uh, you know, a clean tube saturation in the mids, but on the low mids, uh, you want something that's more of a warm tube, you could kind of work that way. And on the low end, you know, uh, work on uh, something that's warm tape. And you can actually kind of mix and match all these different things. Plus, you have tone controls, you know, so that you can kind of work uh, with this as a real amazingly powerful, once you really dig into it, um, uh, uh, you know, amazing control over tonal characteristics, kind of everything that you want if you're looking to shape sound. Uh, so this is a really powerful one. Plus you have a whole modulation section which you can open up and then you can link to certain parameters uh, and have those come in. And that's really where it kind of gets crazy. Uh, the Timeless plugin is uh, a little bit more of like um, analog tape delay uh, emulation. That's the basic characteristic of it. And then you can do all kinds of things with it, including time stretching. And then there's all kinds of filters uh, that you can put into place. Again, uh, you can modulate any of the parameters. So it's kind of cool where you can essentially kind of link uh, link these points out to different um, parameters. And then, uh, and then that shows up here, and then you can make that adjustment and set those modulation characteristics. Um, which is kind of cool, and then just uh, delete them. So you can kind of take any aspect of the delay. Uh, in this case, you have two stereo delays, the way that they feed back into each other, where they fit in the mix down in terms of panning, uh, set of ping-ponging effects, uh, and all kinds of crazy stuff. Very, very cool, right? Um, you can see here there's uh, tape, or you can go into stretch mode that uh, does a whole lot of other crazy things. Uh, the Volcano plugin is uh, taking what you had here with the micro and the simplon, right? So you could see the micro here. The Volcano plugin takes that to a whole other extreme level, again, with a whole other modulation section that allows you to do all kinds of sweeping, crazy filter effects. And if you really want to get a sense of what this does, does really quickly, you could just kind of toggle through some of uh, the presets here, and you can kind of get a, a lot of ideas of the scope of what's available in there. It's really, really cool. Um, if you go back to the original, the very first plugin that FabFilter came out with was not um, an equalization or compressor plugin. It was actually a synth. I remember these guys are musicians, so they came out with a FabFilter 1, this sort of a mono lead synth uh, kind of thing, um, more or less um, kind, of, kind of inspired by analog synth sound. And then they also have the Twin 2, which actually has... Whoa, that's pretty loud. Um that uh, has a whole other um, uh, kind of uh, stage of presets, and then you can also drag and drop in different filters and all other kinds of things in here as well. And it has all kinds of different effects that work great for guitars, for keys, for leads, uh, drums, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, so you can load up uh, different presets for different sounds and programs. So it gives you quite a lot of power in there. Um, and you know you could program a whole ton of stuff in there. So it's another cool one that's uh, sort of hidden. So the majority of plugins are the ones that I really focus on uh, because I'm not uh, a uh, sound designer or a producer from uh, the perspective of songwriter, you know, and creating and making sounds and beats and stuff like that. So that stuff, I spend less time on that. But uh, in terms of the quality of their EQs, compressors, gates, limiters, multiband compressors, really, really, really top-notch stuff, really accurate, incredibly intelligently laid out when you really dig into the details of every processor that they create uh, everything really makes perfect sense and once you understand like the clean logic uh, and and the clear way that it's displayed and once you get through you know some of what some of the different icons are and what they mean and how to use them 
and you work your way through the shortcuts and stuff like that, all the different ways, the workflow is incredibly fast. Uh, it's one of the things I really love about the Pro-Q2. It's just so easy. Just something simple like where you click on the display will select the filter type. And things like that are, are a really powerful way of, uh, of getting your work done very quickly. Um, and, you know, that's something uh, for this, including the frequency analyzer, uh, especially on the Pro-Q2, that's really powerful. So amazing stuff. Um, and uh, that's why in the Ultimate Plug-in Guide, Mixing with Mike, uh, the Manufacturer Spotlight is uh, FabFilter.